It's He-Man time! Hello and welcome to another figure review. Today we're going to have a look at the Super 7 Masters of the Universe Classics. The Dark Despot Skeletor, a.k.a. the one, the only Skeletor from the old school Masters of the Universe movie starring Dolph Lundgren. We already had a look at He-Man, Dolph Lundgren himself, and of course, I also had to get Skeletor. Because, quite frankly, I like this design. It looks wonky, but it's still Skeletor, and, you know, I just like wonky stuff. So let's look at it. Starting off with the size, as usual, he stands at about 18 centimeters to the top of his hat, which means we're going up to 7.2 inches. The face sculpt is, quite frankly, amazing. And... I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, I think right now with Super 7 are the kings of paint. I have not had that well painted figures in my hand for a long time. Especially considering all the quality control issues I had with other companies. But yes, face color is amazing. Now you could say, why is the part over his eyes, why is that white and why is it under his eyes? Skin tone. Now from what I can tell from some pictures I looked at that is accurate, however the face should be a little bit more pale. I feel like the skin tone is a little bit too tan, but a minor detail, the eyes are just beautifully painted and all the detail in the face as well. You have the entire hood, which is super nicely molded. It has a little like a long stretch over here. It is completely connected to the hat, which we'll have a closer look to at when we get to the articulation. And then, now as far as the entire body mold goes, I just wanna address real quick, this is not movie accurate because I think the actor in the movie wasn't really ripped and he had kind of like a spandex under the armor. You have all the armor parts over here, that is nice, that is well done, but everything under there that was like a little bit sparkly spandex which they didn't go through with it. They did just like a muscly body, uh, muscly body mold which um, I guess is like the standard. They probably use like the same mold that they used for the He-Man figure. I'm not sure on that, but anyway, moving on to the uh, to detail, the paint, as I mentioned, Super 7 does not fail. You have the nice gold, there are also awesome sparkles, especially in the chest plate, you can tell. And the effect of it is just super nice, I love it, really exquisite. You got like an M, kind of like symbol, is it an M symbol? I don't know. Tons of detail also in the armor. I love it, I love it, and like a little bit of red paint over there, and kind of like a bronze tone, and yeah, I just like, I, I don't even know how to do it, it's just like, it's a, it's a thin layer of, of paint, it looks pretty dark as it should, but also a little bit sparkly and just, yeah, the only kind of, we have a mishap over there, <gasps> but yeah, all the other ones are clean, you got skulls, there are skulls on the lower part also, some more detail in it. Let me move up the arm, get some more skulls over there. Red line in the chest, very nice and clean. Tire cape piece is rubbery, so you can lift that up. <gasps> There's a big paint smudge over there. What the hell? Come on, Super 7. I'm over here like being our oh, kings of paint. And then you do me dirty like that, and you got like the uh, Darth Vader gauntlets. Uh, it looks like Darth Vader. Got the nice metallic paint on it and on the side and all kinds of doohickeys. That are connected to it, I don't even know what that means. And then the lines on the fist. As we move down, got the belt buckle with some more red, nice kind of, a little bit of a tiki-like symbol, I don't know. It looks cool. That's the most important fact. And then we got more skulls, and once again, they kind of missed to paint this one. But all the other ones look pretty nice. There's like some small details they missed here and there, which is, a little bit disappointing, but it's, as I'm saying, small details. Then you have the crotch piece, which is also kind of sparkly. And we move down to the tiny skulls on his boots. And that's about it. Articulation-wise, just like the Dolph Lundgren He-Man, it is kind of limited. And with this one, it's with Skeletor, it's even more limited. Now the hat. The hood is connected to the hat piece, as you can tell. It rotates with it, but as such, you don't really have a lot of motion. It doesn't really go forward. Doesn't really go to the back because of the hood. It's really just, you can wiggle it around, but that's about it. It immediately pulls back. And it does, would go all the way around. You really have to play around with the hood. It's obviously blocking it. And that's the entire 
problem with it. It does tilt side to side oh so slightly, but yeah. Pretty blocked head because of the hurt, you got a big hinge in the shoulder. Same thing, they, the shoulder pads are actually connected to the shoulder itself, instead of like making it its own kind of floppy piece. Like we see in a lot of figure arts and figma, they didn't really do that. Also rotates around, okay, let me, let me pull it back down. Rotates around, goes all the way around. Then you got the swivel in the bicep also is blocked because of the shoulder pad does have decent range and you got a simple hinge in the elbow not a swivel in the hand with a hinge attached to it goes back forth and then you got the ab crunch also by the way these pieces are rubbery so that does not get into the way of your articulation but yeah the ab crunch goes to the back and forth and that's about it. Pretty simple, not the greatest, and you have full rotation on like the crotch swivel. Crotch swivel, is that a word? It is now, ha huh. Legs, they move forward. Let me get that up. Move out to the side and move to the back, even though you have this entire row piece in front of it. Doesn't really, doesn't really hinder it. Also has some rotation on the ball over there. Then you got a simple hinge in the knee. And it's just one hinge. And the foot has another hinge, which is packed in. They pack in the foot into the hinge. So goes forward, back, and beautiful pivot side to side, like a lot, like all the way to round off your articulation. For the accessories, you don't have different hands, you don't have different hands, but what you're getting is pretty nicely done, except for the sword. The sword is kind of lame. It has like the same, well, it's not as rubbery, I feel like, like He-Man's sword, but. I don't know, it just looks kind of dirty. I don't know if that's maybe they did that on purpose, but also the handle, just like a uh, boring black. I mean, it's probably accurate, but still as a sword, it just, it doesn't look so great. However, the key, uh, I think it's just called the key. I'm not really sure anymore. Let me move out, that out to the side. This thing, this thing, look at the paint on this thing though. Oh my God. All these tiny little gems on top over here, whatever it is, it is all pretty rubbery. So it goes a little bit to, in every direction. It's actually not that rubbery, but it's just like a little bit smooshed over here and there. But still, paint job on this thing, absolutely fantastic. You kind of have a little handle over here. Have it like, can you put it in his belt? Don't think you can open this. It doesn't seem like you can open this. Gonna try that later, and then you have his beautiful scepter again. You got the gold and kind of dry brushing, the black dry brush on it. Gives it a really nice look, and it just this, this scepter is amazing, I love it. It has some black, more gold on it. Overall, a great display piece. And it's already gonna do it, it's gonna bring me to the final thoughts of this figure. And it's basically like the same thing that I had with the Dolph Lundgren He-Man. He looks fantastic. The paint job and the mold on it is just awesome. Yes, on this one we do have some uh, inconsistencies, not 100% movie accurate as far as his outfit goes, like with the, uh, should have the sparkly spandex under it and shouldn't be as muscly, but I can forgive that still. I think the paint job and everything looks amazing on it, but of course the articulation is kind of limited and the accessories don't, you don't get any different hands, don't get any different faces. But at the price point, these figures cost around 50 bucks. Uh, depending on where you get them, if you buy them from uh, America from the Super 7 store or Big Bad Toy store, it's around 50, it's 50 bucks. But I have to import it. Well, I got it locally from the Fancy Box. I don't know if I shouted them out last time, so I'm gonna shout out this time Fancy Box. I got all my Mass of the Universe movie figures over there for around 70 bucks, and it's still worth it to me. I think it's a unique design, it's a unique concept, it's a unique idea, and I love it. So, I do recommend this one if you like the design, if you like the movie, or just like janky stuff like me, but just again, be aware. Articulation is still good, but it's kind of limited, and you're not getting much different hands or faces to display, but you got a bunch of cool weapons, which is all very nicely painted. So, that's gonna do it, guys. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like, and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, card game stuff, and whatever. Skeletor.
ones. Just had to take them off the base because otherwise I wouldn't have gotten the face. 